evening campers we did it we did it everyone i didn't believe in me you probably didn't believe in me but we have finally done it we read all three of titi dan Gramka's books can i have a whoop anyone can i hear a whoop can i hear a whoop oh oh no one no one cares they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they it does not matter if you care because in 1988 the first Zimbabwean woman writing in English brought out Nervous Conditions which became an African classic, a modern classic. And Titi Dangarambo would go on to continue the story in 2006 with the Book of Not and finally, finally, 2018 this mournable body came out to bring us closure, to bring us the, the final moments of this trilogy that Titi Dangarabha has been working on for 30 years. And people don't like this book. A lot of the criticism for this mournable body is that it is a boring story. And I agree with them. A lot of the criticism says that Tambu is not well-rounded. She's not well-developed. And I agree. A lot of the criticism says that this incessant use of the second person, where Tambu is only referred to as you, is waning. And I agree. So why in the description have you given this a 9 out of 10? Yes, with this review, this mournable body has made it into the good book club. <coughs> the good book drill never lies. And yes, this story is a times boring. Yes, Tambu is not a well-rounded character. And this use of the second person does drag. But I think Titi Dangaramga is purposefully doing all of this, and I'm gonna give you my reasons why. This mournable body starts off with Tambu in a woman's hostel in Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe. And Tambu has reached the limit of age in this hostel, therefore she has to go out and find herself work. Now remember in the book of Not Tambu leaves her role as a copywriter for white colleagues taking credit for the work that she has done. And really in this mournable body, Titi Dangarama takes this notion further. As we see white Zimbabweans, we see the colonists, we see people internationally still wanting to take their mark, to put their flag in the soil for work that Tambu and other black women have done. Therefore, the first point of why is this book boring? Remember, Tambu is an able to progress, something that I covered in my in the book of not, but also in nervous conditions. And the reason why this plot has no drive behind it, the reason why this book has no energy, the reason why this plot is unable to progress in any meaningful way is that Tambu herself, due to the colonists, due to the chains of colonialism, which are still, still affecting her, due to the patriarchal means of Shona life, Shona culture, she's unable to progress herself. In this story, Tambu hits upon every pitfall, every humiliation that she has we feel and only when she's able to truly progress as a person in a very immoral way where she has to sell out her own village sell out her own people sell out her own family to appease to entertain white people abroad this is where the story starts to pick up therefore the plot drags because Tambu has so much baggage on her and she is going up against a mountain of patriarchy, of colonialism, of generational trauma. The book is unable 
to pick up until Tambu is able to free herself of those. But she can't. She's completely unable to. And how Dengaremga has weaved all this trauma, able to hark back through the trilogy and not give new life to it, she breathes the decay of Tambu. Everything that Tambu touches, everything that Tambu experiences is a loss of control. It's a loss of her self. This will lead me on to point number two. Tambu is not a well-rounded character. Now, if you go back to nervous conditions rather than her experiences in education and her life with Baba Makuru, we focus on Nyesha, we focus on my guru, we focus on her mother, we focus on her aunt. And Titi Dangarama in the final lines of Nervous Conditions tells us that this is not Tambu's story. In the second book, the Book of Not, Tambu is more a central character, but she herself is beginning to seep. She's beginning to lose personhood, unhu, that showed a characteristic of person. Hood, and she's only able to be a person in society. She's only able to achieve unhu if everyone else is able to do that. And we see Dangaramanga play with view. We move from first person to third person to second person. At times, Tambu does not know that she's doing the actions that she's doing. From losing the sense and self, which is characterised in this second person strict narrative, which I will talk about soon. Tambu is therefore not a sound person. Throughout this multiple body, we see Tambu constantly lie to friends, to family members, to herself, to potential employers, to colleagues. She lies in order to obtain a better scenario, not the ideal scenario, not a realistic scenario, but a scenario that will be able to give her some foundation in a world that is fracturing at the seams. And Tsitsi Dangaramka is slowly stitching, she's slowly sewing the seams together, but rather than having a tapestry, we have a patchwork where... Tambu is a mix. She's really a melting pot of culture. Yes, she's had a white person's education. Yes, she's grown up in the homestead and has a Shona background. But she's been brought up as a white person, but has no respect, has no status, has no dignity that the white man can dictate, can take, can sabotage. This state of flux is constant within Tambu. She really is unable to achieve unhu because no one around her is able to replicate what Tambu wants them to replicate. Rather than being a person in society, she truly is a flaneur where she walks, she strolls, she flits in and out of people's lives in order to find meaning. But the meaning is constantly being walked past, it's being gazed at, only to slightly turn the head to walk to a new horizon. She's unable to conceptualise what the horizon will be for her. All she knows is that at one point this is needs to end. Now you might be satisfied with that answer to why Tambu is not a well-defined, well-rounded character, but due to an incident with Tambu being a teacher beats a child up to the point where they are deaf in one year because Tambu's not happy with the optimism that these kids have because she had that optimism in school and it's led her to a state of poverty. It's led her to a place of limbo. She's constantly plateaued in society. But I digress. That soul instance sees Tambu taken 
antidepressants in order to help her mental state. Suicide is contemplated, but Tambu is unable to go through with the act because her heart is so big, her soul is so welcoming that she's unable to go through with the act because she believes, because she's been taught that there is something better for her somewhere. And that leads us to what I think is an absolute feat. Though difficult, second person narrative. This narrative has you at the center of it all. You are the person who has made Tambu lose her sense of being. You therefore have to live out the life. You have to live out the consequences of colonialism. You have to live out the consequences of patriarchy through Tambu's eyes. You must live this life. And yes, at times it is wearing because you feel as though you wouldn't do certain situations. You feel as though Tambu isn't well-rounded, but you are the cause of everything. You made this book. You were the reason why Tsitsi Dangaramga sat down and wrote this. You must fulfil the story in an active role. I think it's worth mentioning that Dangaramga is a filmmaker. The second person really has this beautiful notion of Dangaramga as the director telling us as actors what we are meant to be portraying, what we are meant to be feeling and what we are meant to be living out. Though this style of writing might jar at first, we do feel as though we are being walked around these cinematic episodic chapters. You have to give Dan Gremger respect for taking her art of script writing, of producing, of directing, of film making that art and weaving it into this story. And I think it's really interesting, especially over these 30 years, that Dan Gremger has not pigeonholed herself to write in the same style as the Nervous Conditions. And if you were expecting a book like Nervous Conditions, I will let you know now, the book of not does not follow that pattern. And this mortable body feels like a more postmodern. It feels like a book that is ready for now, ready to challenge readers on history, on culture, on what it is to be a person. The author of the African classic Things Fall Apart, Chinua Achebe, says that this book is as natural as the grass grows. And why I agree with that sentiment, I want to take this further. Really, this book is a snake in the grass. It's still, it's camouflage. You're not sure where it's going. You're not sure if it's there at all. But when you're comfortable, when you start to take your eye, when you start to weigh how this book strikes with all its venom in its gut-wrenching act of violence is phenomenal. How Dan Garamba has done this, I, am, I don't know, but it's an act of genius, of masterful writing, of someone who has clearly spent three decades working on their art. The colonists originally come to Rhodesia to improve the land according to what they want. And we view this as bad. We view this as why? Like, why? Why did people come into a nation, tell them what to do, and make them live their lives according to what we want? In a globalised world, the people of Zimbabwe have to bring over businessmen, white businessmen, to give them money for them to live their lives as the business wants them to. And they can't get rid of them this time because it affects the entire country once again. And Tambu, her most 
stable in her most sound self, in a place where she finds unhu personhood, is in an eco village, a place where white people will come to get a true authentic experience of the Zimbabwean people. White people pay money to have black people pretend to live out their lives according to what they want. And Tambu utterly gives her family, her original homestead, away to the colonists in order to have a sense of purpose, just as the white people wanted to do. It's as Tambu's experiences in advertising agencies has taught her. It's not what you call it, it's how you brand it. Globalization and tourism wanting people to pretend to live out their lives is just capitalist colonialism. And Titi Dangaramga just wonderfully it brings that message and it is so hard it's so hard to uh, it, it's so right it's so right it's 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 obvious it's so obvious when you think about it in those terms that i was left speechless by this book. I was left speechless because what it is doing and how it does it and how Titi Dangaranga has evolved as a writer from reading these books in the course of, of, of a week. This book utterly deserves its place on the Booker long list. Utterly deserves its place. And I am so happy I will say for Booker to give this novel recognition, to put it in the mainstream. I urge you all to read this novel on the basis that you have read the other two. This is not a standalone novel in any way, shape or form. This harks back so much to Nervous Conditions and The Book of Not. Without these two, poignant, explicit, beautiful moments will be missed completely. This is not a standalone. You need the other two. And I hope that due to the publicity that this is getting, these two will become more obtainable. This is a classic in the making. This is a classic in the making. 100%. Titi Dangaramga, thank you for this journey. Wonderful.